Okay, so this is the last show before the Olympics start, right? Well, yesterday, you know, I was just kind of geeking out about kayak cross and talking about what I'm excited about. We should also talk about some of the concerning drama or just drama in general related to the game. So first off, we gotta talk about the fact that a convicted child rapist is competing this year. With that being Steven Van de Velde, who's a 29 year old beach volleyball player for the Netherlands. And in 2014, a few days before his 20th birthday, he raped a 12 year old British girl. Reportedly, he started talking to this girl on social media, Skype, Facebook, Snapchat, chat, spoke to her almost every day over a few months. And then in August, he boarded a flight to meet his victim in person. He took a taxi to the town where she lived and he raped her. It has been described as he had sex with her in some reports, but this is a child. He raped her. And with this, finally in 2016, he admitted to three counts of rape against a child with a UK judge then sentencing him to four years in prison. And there, that judge actually telling him, quote, your hopes of representing your country now lie as a shattered dream. Your actions in those two days in England have wrecked your life and you could, had you never come to England and committed these offenses have been a leader in your sport. But obviously, as we're seeing now, those hopes actually haven't been shattered in the slightest. I mean, starting with the fact that he only got a four year sentence to begin with, and he actually ended up spending less than half that time in prison, serving just 12 months in the UK before he was transferred to the Netherlands under a treaty between the countries. And there he was re-sentenced to a shorter term under Dutch law, serving one more month before being released. And so he's actually been back competing on the volleyball tour and in international competitions for several years, even getting married and having a kid. So while things have been smooth enough, of course you have the Olympics here and it's put a spotlight back on this case like nothing else. And understandably, a lot of people asking how the hell the IOC could let this happen? Well, to that point, it's basically because the IOC doesn't have its own rules for the selection of athletes, or they let each country make their own decisions. So with that, the Netherlands Olympic Committee has simply said the guy served his sentence and completed an extensive rehabilitation program, as well as claiming that experts have concluded that there's no risk of him reoffending. But with that, you have people like Ciara Bergman, the CEO of Rape Crisis England and Wales saying, if you can rape a child and still compete in the Olympics despite all athletes signing a declaration promising to be a role model, that is just shocking. And adding there, there is always an impact on the individual victim survivor, but every act of violence against women and girls is a crime against society. It is a collateral and collective impact on all other women and girls. And then you also have groups like the Survivors Trust adding to that in a statement saying, the rape of a child was planned, calculated, involving international travel, and will undoubtedly cause his victim lifelong trauma, irreversibly changing the course of her life. As a society, we have to start embracing a zero tolerance approach to this heinous and costly crime. And as far as my opinion, uh, I mean, you know it. I don't think he should be anywhere near the Olympics unless he is buried underneath one of the courts. But then, you know, like I said, this is just one of the stories around the IOC and the Olympics because the IOC is also getting a lot of heat for a situation that has to do with Russian and Belarusian Olympic athletes competing in the Olympics, being accused of supporting the war in Ukraine. And that's a big deal, not only because fuck Russia for the war in Ukraine, but also because it's technically not allowed. Right? There are actually IOC rules banning any athletes who are actively supporting the invasion of Ukraine or who have served in Russia's military from competing. And so with that, Russia Russia and Belarus have been banned from sending official teams to Paris at all because of the invasion in Ukraine. With instead, people with Russian or Belarusian passports having been allowed to apply to compete as individual neutral athletes if they meet the requirements. So that's why there's only 15 Russian athletes this year when in the past, they've typically been one of the largest Olympic teams. Like in Tokyo, for example, they had more than 330 athletes competing. But then with that, you now have a human rights law firm claiming that out of just those 15 athletes, 10 have violated the rules allowing them to compete. With the firm specifically saying the athletes that either like social media posts supporting the invasion of Ukraine, compete in pro-war competitions or were members of military link sports clubs. Like one Russian road cyclist, for example, liked an Instagram post from a month after the invasion featuring an image of Joseph Stalin with a caption saying, a truce with the enemy is possible only after its destruction. And with that, a legal advisor for the firm behind the report also accusing the IOC of making statements about peace and human rights without taking action to support them. Specifically saying the IOC is more than happy to try to let these things blow over because the IOC is profiting from a system where it understands that it can claim to be pro-human rights. It says athletes represent the value of peace, dignity, but then it doesn't actually put in the work to ensure the Olympic Games truly represents that. But then also we have to talk about how there's drama around the Olympics having a spying scandal hitting women's soccer right now. Right, it has to do with the Canadian women's team, which notably is the team that won gold three years ago in Tokyo. And so basically the spying was apparently someone flying a drone over a couple of the New Zealand team's practices. With someone obviously spotting the drone, they then reported it to police, and then the police were able to track down the operator, who ended up being Joseph Lombardi, who is an unaccredited analyst with the Canadian women's team. Now with that, the Canadian Olympic Committee came out with a statement saying that they were shocked and disappointed. And with that, offering their quote, heartfelt apologies to New Zealand football, to all the players affected and to the New Zealand Olympic Committee. And on top of that, Lombardi, as well as the assistant coach responsible for him, were actually sent home. You also had the Canadian head coach denying any involvement in the scheme, saying that she would step aside for the first game against New Zealand anyways. But still, with that, you had the New Zealand football CEO calling for urgent action to be taken to address this integrity breach. With him saying to hear 
now that the Canadian team had filmed secret footage of our team training at least twice is incredibly concerning and if not treated urgently, could have wider implications for the integrity of the tournament. But then finally, we gotta talk about the future of the Olympics. So not the next one, the, the one that's still 10 years away. Because just yesterday, Salt Lake City was officially chosen to host the 2034 Winter Olympics and Paralympics. But now already you have Olympic officials threatening to move them elsewhere. And it turns out it's because the US has continued efforts to investigate allegations of Chinese doping. Because if you don't remember, some elite Chinese swimmers have tested positive for two banned substances in the past. And while the World Anti-Doping Agency reviewed those results, they kept them secret, with the athletes then allowed to compete in 2021 at the Tokyo Summer Olympics. And the agency there is saying that it chose to accept the Chinese government's explanation that repeated positive tests for performance enhancing drugs were actually the results of accidental contamination. But this is US drug testing experts and many American athletes as well have rejected those explanations. And so we've got this bipartisan group of US lawmakers calling for an investigation saying, it is imperative to assess whether these alleged doping practices were state sponsored. And then actually earlier this month, the Department of Justice opened a criminal probe into all of this. And so all of it has led to a series of statements from top IOC members criticizing US officials for not accepting the previous findings. And in an unprecedented move, the IOC demanded that officials in Utah, along with the US Olympic and Paralympic Committee, sign a contract affirming, quote, respect for the authority of the World Anti-Doping Agency in exchange for this week's agreement to hold the 2034 Winter Games in Salt Lake City, which is absolutely fucking wild. But with any and all of the news that we just talked about with the Olympics, of course, I'd love to know your thoughts on it. Let me hear from you in those comments down below.